Oh my gosh, it was so cold last night. Luckily I was prepared because I sat out at night with the other couple to watch the meteor shower, which was disappointing, but to spend time staring at the sky, which I never do, was awesome. Do you see this? I have my rain jacket on. I kept my gator thing on. I have a blue puffy vest on, a wool sweater on, my sleeping long sleeve black shirt on, thin, it's kind of a wool thing. This is what I was riding and I never ever sleep in my riding clothes. Like I never get in because there's they I was sweating in these all day. On my legs I have my long johns and I have my thick fuzzy cycling leggings on over them. It was zipped and I was I was I was in it. The slot that's open was like way up here. I pushed myself down in. My feet were freezing. I have two pairs of socks on. Wow. Wow, was it cold. Anyway, I have to go to the bathroom so bad since the middle of the night and, and I haven't gone because I didn't want to I didn't want to get out of my tent and lose the heat. Anyway, I better go before I piss myself. This is the new uh, way of fly fishing. He's showing us. Oh, there it is. You're lucky to witness this. And he's catching these incredibly amazing fish. This is the lake to come to. Look at the oh, size of this oh, sucker. Oh. Well. It's basically bait fishing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I met Max and Candy last night for the meteor shower. Max, we traveled all over the world training salespeople. I believe it was for Microsoft. He said he watched me talking to this other guy. He said you would be an amazing salesperson because you really listen to people and you ask questions, you really engage in them. You sort of put out there what you're looking for. You're not sure what you want to do for the next phase of your life and you're not sure where to live and then people recommend towns they enjoyed or jobs they've heard of, connections. But then this morning I ran into them. He said, you know, Naomi, you're going to be just fine. <laughs> it always comes back to do what you're passionate about. And what I'm passionate about is sharing information with people, taking risks and hoping that my adventures inspire other people. Most of my adventures are always by myself and I'm a girl and apparently that's a big deal. <laughs> I mean, for 30 years it's like, you're alone? You're doing this alone? Then I met these kids. I still have a hard time calling people younger than me, even in their 20s kids, because I guess I just don't feel that old. And maybe it's because I didn't get married and have kids. I don't really feel I've aged. Does that make any sense? I never entered that adult phase. <laughs> I could totally hang with 20 year olds and not feel old. I just don't. I just doesn't, it doesn't register. Two couples, one couple is going to be getting married and they sell their cars. I'm so engaged in it that I'm not thinking of shooting it, which I know you prefer to see the people. I get it. I'll get better at it. I did that for years, but now for some reason I'm, I'm not. They sold everything. They were in Indonesia, I think, and they were concerned about COVID getting sick over there and not having the right medical care. So they came back to the US and they're doing the work away. If you don't know what it is, just go to workaway.com or .org. I don't know what the full ending is. Really cool opportunities all over the world. I think some people take advantage of it a little bit, like looking for free babysitting, which I think is wrong, but I'm a member. So they brought to the table Amsterdam. Amsterdam has always been on the map of a awesome, cool, adventurous place to live. The waterways is cycling. Yes, I know it has weed. I'm not really a big weed smoker, so it doesn't really matter to me. Apparently getting visas is not super difficult. That's what's tied me up this morning and it was completely worth it. Just wonderful people, wonderful to talk to, just so genuine and empathic, engaged, motivating, inspiring, like all the conversation seems to be that way. There's something about people on the road that are willing to sort of get outside and take risks and kind of wing it that have just a certain mindset that I'm really attracted to. And I find the conversations extremely fulfilling. And hopefully they feel that way after talking to me. All right, so we're gonna start cycling. Wow, it's the one pan of this lake and I'll shut up. So we didn't see any animals, but there was a little chipmunk who was chewing on the corner of my tent right at my ear. So I was able to catch him right away. They see you leave and they immediately come to where you just were. Chipmunk spies. All right, off to Pole Bridge.
flowers lining this beautiful little road. I am going to have 12 miles downhill of this. Incredible. Every once in a while you need to pull over because a ginormous dragonfly crashed into your head. The bugs, they go into my helmet like the bees and you'll hear them in there buzzing around. Usually they come out, but the dragonflies sometimes get stuck. You know, their wings, they're long. Always prepared to squeal like a little girl, but it hasn't happened yet. Isn't this the most beautiful little camp spot? This little bridge. What I'm learning is like this northern side of Red Meadow, there's been quite a few little spots to pull over and camp. And just turning off the main road to go on this forest road. This is what Mike recommended from Glacier Cyclery said that the pole bridge road, that road is a mess and it's a super washboard. I'm gonna say it's worth going a mile out of my way to avoid washboard. The thing is, there is a chance I'm gonna see some animals back here. It's very sweet, look at this. This is like a road I thought would represent bike packing, things like this. I wanna look to my left and right to see if there's bears, but I don't at the same time. <laughs> Beautiful back here. This trip that I'm doing is just so, it's such a wonderful mix. I love it. And if you're coming from West Glacier, if, you, if you're not looking to go to Pole Bridge, you should totally do this shortcut. You come down this, through this dip, you cross over a bridge down there, the white see the little bridge, and the road will start to curve up there. You're taking this right. That's if you're coming from West Glacier. It says, 376. So we should only be like a mile south of Pole Bridge. And the distance is West Glacier. That has to be sort of the thick of it right there in the center. So I bet that's around the area where you do the climb, the road to the sun. Oh wow, check that out. Isn't that striking? Oh my goodness, absolutely gorgeous. The pavement ends, but it's this hard packed mud, which I'm totally cool with. It's not a mi even a mile, it's nothing. Here we are. This is like a famous place. Everyone knows about their pastries. I'm really excited about this because as a cyclist, we get a free pastry. Oh my gosh, this is cuter than I imagined. Imagine owning this place and everybody comes to get pastries and you're in the middle of nowhere entering Pole Bridge. Here it is, oh my gosh, I love this. The little cabins. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Glacier in the distance. Okay, let's go check this place out. A little fruit and vegetable sand stand over here. Oh wow. I'll keep all the lights off, keep it cool. Look at all this yummy stuff they gave, I bought, and they gave me this for free because I'm cycling. Isn't that awesome? Okay, thanks. I just left Pole Bridge and I have a little guy who's trying to hitch a ride without asking. <laughs> Would you like to go somewhere else? Don't crawl towards my face though. I see you have little pinchers on your mouth. You're awfully cool looking. If you're in focus, I don't know. These freaking horse flies are really bad here. Look at that, that's part of Glacier. Like Northern Glacier. Those rocky, gorgeous mountains. Sorry for the jaggedy. It's just the flies are so bad the minute I stop. 
gotten super gnarly. And that's why I keep yelling, fucking hell. I got off the road just in time. That would have sucked. I just pulled over because I saw Word's cabin and I'm just gonna show it to you. It has some historical value. I think it's $75 a night. Let's just go peek inside. By the way, if it's $75 for this cabin, that's a pretty fantastic deal. It was a lot just for me because I actually looked at it. But if you have some people, what a romantic getaway. It looks like somebody's staying here. There's a basket of food on the table. Suitcase, oh yeah. Gosh, I hope they're not napping. I'll just apologize and tell them I was just curious. So there's your little living room. I would like a yummier L couch. Yeah, it's really basic. And of course it is supposed to be a cabin, right? But I think it needs a just a step up. A new couch, L-shaped, cozier, bigger. I can't help do interior design choices. It's just in my blood. All right, so I guess we're gonna keep going. My objective, besides my phone's on the brink of dying, is to go over to the campsite that those guys stayed at that I met at um, Whitefish Campground the ones doing the Great Divide. I didn't really interview them. They said that there was a deer that hung around like a dog. That would be an awesome, because it's kind of my last place that I'm crashing besides Eureka before I like hit the Canadian border. And it's probably another 10 miles. It's 5.15. I'm not gonna hit any crazy climbs like yesterday, so pedal on. Here's Wirt's cabin. And the campsite where the guys said the deer hung out with them was here. Let's just say it's nine miles. 10, 11. I'm averaging probably eight miles an hour. So over an hour, it's okay. It'll be perfect time to set up tent. Look at this. Just is right past the Wirtz cabin. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize Glacier went on for so long and was so vast, heading north. It's incredible. I, I think I want to cry. I am a few miles from the border on a dirt road. There was a turn I didn't take. Somewhere right at the point where I must have checked, there was a turn. I am so tired and I am so thirsty and it's almost 6.30. I would be at that campground right now if I didn't take this turn. Now I have to go back and I just went down a nice hill and this road, I fucking hate it. It is making my ride miserable. The ride is beautiful. The road is a fucking mess. I cannot believe I have to turn around. I am so, I'm so flustered right now. I'm, I'm just, I'm so upset right now. Here's where I'm just coming back from and this is the turnoff. I stopped right here and I looked at ride with GPS. I stopped, I don't even need these anymore. Ironically, I was right on the red line. Had I looked like just like a little bit further up, I would have noticed that I just came off the red line. Ugh, the road is miserable. You're so just staring at the ground. Jarring is probably the word I'm looking for. It's very jarring, nonstop jarring for hours. I can't fucking believe that like this, I stopped right at this intersection and looked at the ride with GPS, the, you know, the digital, I zoomed in. It shows exactly where you are. All right, anyway, I'm done bitching. Onward. It's 7.40 and I just came out of like a forest. <laughs> like a thick forest and there was a campsite, but it was down deep and I just didn't like being so deep in the woods and it, boom, it just opened up. The site I've been looking for should be like up here somewhere and it's like taking forever for me to get there. Maybe the site is just down over this bridge down here. Hopefully it is because I'm done. My battery is weak, so navigating is not working for a ride with GPS and it won't navigate to the campsite anyway because it's not, it's not downloaded as a point of interest. Anyway, but isn't it beautiful? <laughs> So where the fuck is this campsite? The water is not running. It was running back there and I'm up for a climb. Oh my gosh, this is really frustrating. And then I turned around. Wow, I think it was worth it after seeing that. 
is one of the most beautiful scenes I've had on this trip. Look at how sharp that peak is. I'm sure it's a very famous peak and has a wonderful name. Anyway, I'm hike a bike in this little section. My legs really started hurting. The guys said that they had a little creek on the left, so this should drop. It is a really cool time to actually be out here, like biking and looking at the light. And right now the grind I'm having would be done. So there'd already be a camp. Yay, it starts going down. So hopefully we're on that curve down is where the site is. Beautiful, beautiful, but even more beautiful, that sign. I've never been so happy to see a sign. I've always relied just on zooming in, it's worked for me. I am so jarred, just that constant intense focus. What a miserable road, miserable for me. I would have no desire to ever ride this road ever again in my life. And it's too bad because it actually is quite beautiful the whole way. All right, let's go set up tent. Remember I told you I came here because a deer hangs out? I just pulled in and this deer was walking into the brush and I screamed out, hey Mark, because that's what one of the guys said he started to call the deer and the deer stopped and looked back. So this place is really spread out. There's a spot way over here. Look at this spot, they're really embedded. It's like a huge area and there's bear boxes I'm seeing, which is fantastic because I have the pastries. One of the guys said, go further back. I can hear water. I'm gonna go over actually back where that deer was. 